Master? Master? Huh, you've awakened. You gave me quite the startle. Do you not remember? You suddenly started staring off into the distance and did not respond to anything I said. I thought you were playing a prank on me. Your hand? Oh yes, I did not let go of it. For if I had, we would be in quite the predicament. Someone approaching the mansion, you say? You saw them? These images were not shown to you by me. If you saw something, then it was by your own powers. But if you think about it, that is nothing unusual. You are, after all, the master of this house. You should, in all actuality, be able to do anything I can do by yourself, master. So it is very possible you could have knowledge that I do not. Now, let's return to the mansion's tale. After the second beast paid a visit, Pestia began to destabilize again. The white-haired girl would soothe his heart, but the calm was only ephemeral. He was like a cracked glass ball. If you dropped him, then that would be the end. If you put too much force in the headline him, he would shatter. He was very difficult to care for, and cracks do not heal. The damage still remains, even if the two sides appear to be held together firmly in place. Furthermore, they slowly, gradually, and without intervention, spread. The beast appeared to be afraid of someone's voice. He would on occasion stir in empty space and shout, cover his ears and groan. One day he shattered all the windows of the mansion, crushed the silverware I had just polished to a shine, and destroyed all the mirrors. I assume he did not want to see his beastly self. More, there's more. There's still more that reflects my image. Windows, mirrors, vases, dishes, they all show my reflection. What are you doing? I have no need of anything that reflects me. You can understand that, can't you? Why? You're going to cut your hands like that. Tracing them all with her fingers, the white haired girl approached Bestia. She stretched her spindly fingers out toward the beast's rugged hands. His hands were wet from blood from his frenzied attempts to destroy anything reflective in the house. Look at all these cuts. Stop. You're going to dirty your hands. Get back. No, I will not. It's no use. No matter how many times you call me human, the mirrors tell another story. Not just the mirrors. Everything reflective shouts beast at me angrily. Look at how precarious I am. It's hideous. Pitiful. I thought it was all over when I protected you from the beast. But now that image keeps coming back to me. The sight of another beast clinging onto me. I can hear its voice. It says I was only ever a beast. Voice? Whose voice? So you don't know. So you can't hear it. You're fighting against something beyond the limits of my perception. Fighting? No. If it were a fight, it speaks the undeniable truth. As I have said before, you are not a beast. You look like me, I am certain of it. Your eyes. What? Your red eyes. They show you nothing, but they show me what I am. They show me the difference between us. Are you afraid of my eyes? My eyes cause you fear. If you can see in them your reflection, then you are welcome to destroy them. Rip them from me with your own hands. I have no need of them after all. Why would you go so far from me? You. The voice says that you're laughing at me. That deep down you ridicule me. Do you believe that? After all the time we've spent together, I don't know. I'm starting to lose confidence. I believe you. I, I think I believe you. But I find myself wavering. I'm losing sight of myself, and of you, of everything. In all my memories, I'm a beast. The voice says I was always this way. Which, I suppose, means I am a beast. I can't be anything not trust the voice. Trust me instead. I... I do not want to make another mistake. To do something like run away, because I'm so weak-willed. I do not understand this woman. She 
She's so pure-hearted, so beautiful, like hope personified. I want to understand, to believe her. I was sure I could do it, but I keep failing. Why am I losing my grip on everything? Are words not enough to convince you? What? Are words not enough to convince you that you are not a beast? And see for yourself, feel for yourself, that there is but one difference between us. What are you doing? I assume our skin and our hair and our eyes are different colors, but those do not count as a difference. The only thing that differs between us is our sex. Hold on. In his utter shock, Bestia was frozen in place, and he was right to be surprised. The sound of rustling fabric shook the air in the forlorn mansion. She had placed her hand on the sleeves of her garments and begun to disrobe. Before long, gaze upon me. She was standing there, completely undressed. Her body was incomparably beautiful. Slender, not an ounce of excess fat on her. The sight of her was impressive, almost divine. Even I let out a gasp when I saw her. See for yourself. This was the first time Bestia had seen the white-haired girl unclothed. Though they slept in the same bed as I said before, they did not have a physical relationship. She grasped his unmoving hand and guided toward her. She moved his hand across her flesh, across the curve of her shoulder, down her arm, and pressed it against her chest firmly enough for him to feel her beating heart. Do you think this caused a stirring within him? Is there any man for whom the touch of a woman's skin would not? Especially one so beautiful as her. However, he was not aroused. Why do you think that was? Because a beast cannot lust after a human? I believe you know the answer. Are you crying? Could you smile for me? What? I want to see your smile. Like this? I'm not sure I'm doing a good job. No, you're doing fine. Your smile is so pretty. It calms me, warms my heart. I think I know someone somewhere who has that same smile. I'd like you to tell me. 
I'd feel better if you turned me down. What? My homeland is only getting more isolated. Unlike your country, mine is not eager to associate with the rest of the world. I probably don't even have their patronage anymore. What I'm saying is that I have absolutely no stability. I can't even say for sure whether I'll be back. So... You're right. There's nothing but obstacles. I'm sure my mom would be opposed as well. But I've fallen for you. The way you look staring out at the sea, the shape of your lips when you smile at me, the kindness in your voice, the more time I spend with you, the deeper I fall in love with you. The whole world could separate us. And these feelings would not change. Oh damn. You beat me to it. say it myself, too. I love you, Pauline. I fell for you the moment I first saw you. I promise, we will meet again. I promise, I'll be waiting. Thank you. It's visible in both of our eyes. This love, strong enough to wash away all our tribulations. It's all right there, plain as day. Did you hear something? Huh? It sounded like someone's voice. I didn't hear anything. It must have been your imagination. Oh. You want to turn back, lady? Nervous. I'm just fine. Let's keep moving. But there is one thing. What? My name isn't Lady, it's Pauline. This again? Lady is so distant. I don't like being called that. So call me Pauline. Paul, Polly, how's that? Can I call you Polly? Oh, come on. I'd rather you call me Pauline. I'm an only child, so I've always wanted a younger brother or sister. Polly makes it sound like I'm the younger one. I am not your brother, and I am not a child. You called yourself a kid yesterday, though. That's not what I meant. Oh, fine. You can call me Polly. It's not my full name. I'm glad you're calling me something like the lady, Javi. Then that's what I'll do. He left. mentioned up ahead staying the top of the cliff. I can't say why exactly, but I feel it's something that shouldn't be there. What do you mean? It feels out of place in this area. And something seems off about it. Like it's somehow ethereal. It could disappear at any moment. No, I'm probably just overthinking things. Sorry, that was stupid of me to say. It's okay. I still can't see the mansion Javi's talking about from here. Just dense, overgrown forest. But for some reason, I can sense that we're approaching it. It's a strange sensation. Anxiety is bubbling up from deep inside me. And at the same time, I feel like I could burst into tears. Not out of fear, but familiarity. Familiarity? I've never been to this country before. Everything I'm seeing is new to me. There's nothing at all for me to find familiar. Why then? I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you sure you want to do this? I am. You agreed not to go inside. Don't break that promise. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm sorry for putting you through this. Making you relive unpleasant memories. But thank you for accompanying me when you have nothing to gain from it. Don't worry, I'll just look around. I'm only searching for a sign he was there. When I'm done, we'll return to the village together. Alright. Okay. Now let's go. We push our way through the dark, dense woods. And then, like the world falling into view after a dream, a 
mansion appears before us. It rests quietly upon a cliff, against a backdrop of emerald ocean. This is the beast's den. It should by all rights be a magnificent scene, but the blue sky and jade sea clash with the building. It appears alone, isolated precariously from the rest of the world. Yes, this is it. This is the mansion where the beast dwells. here in the village. We have farmland, cattle, ships. It's not easy to let all that go. Not everyone can just hop on a boat to another country like you, Polly. We're not wealthy. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I know, I was being too harsh. You're just ignorant. So naive you believe the whole world is this perfect, magical place. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. If you're capable of seeing the world like that, there's no reason you should look at it any other way. For as mature as you can be, Javi, you're also rather cynical. Well, pardon me. And you... You said you would take me to your town. That kind of made my day. There's nothing left for me in this village. You'll find plenty of new things, I'm sure. You can even make some friends in my town. After all, you've still got a long life ahead of you, Hobby. So you should make it a fun one. Make it sound like I'm about to throw myself off a cliff. I didn't mean it like that. We should try to keep quiet from here out. Okay, got it. As we draw closer to the mansion, I can see the ivy twisted across its stone walls. I press my back against the wall and take a few deep breaths. There's a window next to me. If there really is a beast, if there really is a terrible man-eating monster inside, I'm in danger if it catches me. How these eyes treat me not to get any closer, but I have to see. I have to see if there's a mountain of corpses inside these walls. If there's even the slightest trace of him, I'm just going to have a look. Peek in from outside without being noticed. That's all I'm going to do. When it's done, I'll go home. Through the window, I see a dimly illuminated hallway. Like the garden, the inside is delicate. There's still the sense that someone lives there. Did I misread that one? So... Desolate. The inside is desolate. It's not completely abandoned. Polly... I see something moving inside the mansion. I hold my breath so whatever it is in there does not sense my presence, does not sense my gaze. And then... What? A shadow whisks past. No. Polly? Hey, Polly! Open up. Please, open the door. Stop it, you idiot. What do you think you're doing? Please, open the door. Polly, you promised me. Have you lost your mind? The only thing in here is a... It's not a beast. Huh? It's not a beast. A beast isn't living in this mansion. You're wrong. It is. There's a beast in there. A bestia. Get away from the door. The beast... It's not a beast. Open the door. Open the... I knew it. I knew it. I was right. You're alive. You're alive. You're alive. I never stopped believing. I knew you wouldn't die. But do you... Yukimasa. I, I had faith you were still alive. I wanted to prove it. And I was right. I'm 
so glad I had faith. I'm so glad I didn't give up. I missed you so. All this time, I've never stopped thinking about you. I've never stopped imagining our reunion. Ricky Moss, I'm so glad you're alive. Stop it, Polly. Get away from him. That's... that's... the beast. Let's go. 
grateful that you cannot see. Because you would certainly think me as a beast if you were able to see this. Because you cannot see, you do not know what I look like. But I do know. Another beast, like me, broke into the mansion. Was it... I protected you. Did I not? I protected you. Say that I protected you. That I did this for you. Actually, a beast? Extravagant. Just an ordinary life. Slowly growing older. Having three, maybe four children. We'd never fight. And eventually, before I knew it, I'd be an old lady. Thinking, ah, uh, it was an uneventful life, but it was the best I could have asked for. That's the life I want. And what about you? Yes, I too wish for a peaceful life with you. Polly, I couldn't, again I couldn't do. Master? Master? What is the matter? You look pale as a ghost. What? I lied to you. I have not told you a single falsehood, Master. Ah, about the beast. That means you were seeing her memories, then. Is that so? That must have been quite difficult to witness. But I assure you, I have told you no lies. Bestia was convinced he was a beast. And as a servant of this house, it is my responsibility to present my former master to you as he saw himself. This would have been a very different story had you not discovered the truth. A beast meets a white-haired girl. Learns humanity. That tale would have been far easier on you, I'm sure. By remaining in the dark and seeing the story through his eyes alone, you would not have had to witness that poor girl's miserable death. And that, perhaps, would have been better for you. But the reality you observe through her eyes changes the truth of this tale. And it sounds like the visions you had did not run in parallel to the events I described for you, but took place slightly earlier in time. Which means that, yes, her fate was set in stone well before you ever saw it. I do have to wonder, though, why did Bestia believe there would be a beast like him? Perhaps it was because her hair, eye, and skin color were similar to his own. The poor young woman who called upon the mansion did indeed resemble Bestia. They were of a similar race. Half of her blood was of the same race as his. But was that the only reason? 
Wouldn't that, would that be enough for him to mistake her for a beast? I have my own theory. His memories may have played a role. I suspect Bestia was afraid the memories from when he was human would have caused him to waver. But that is simply my own speculation. Perhaps he had merely lost his grip on reality. How well have you come to understand Bestia, Master? You do appear to think he was an ordinary human who believed himself to be a beast. But where? Does the line between man and beast truly lie? That I do not know. Master, if, like Bestia, you were to lose your memories, and endure persecution and degradation until you broke, would you still remember those you care for? Now, our tale is not yet over. The web of misfortune was tightly, oh, so tightly entangled. It could not be unraveled. Let us return now from her memories to the point we left off in our story. Just after the white-haired girl had disrobed, showing Bestia the difference between her and him. This was, yes, several days following the young woman's death. The blood in the hall had been cleaned up, and there was no trace of it any longer. He had made a tremendous mistake. Though the only people aware of that mistake are you and I. There is perhaps a chance the white-haired girl had realized, but she knew nothing of the woman. So I entreat you not to fault the white-haired girl for trying to be kind to Bestia. She is without sin. In any and all times. The beast. No, the man made the white-haired girl put her clothes back on. He seemed to have calmed down a bit. After examining her body and comparing it with his own, he was once again coming to think he might not be a beast. In the past, he would have rejoiced to have proof of his own humanity. However, it was for him that the seed of several new doubts. You said I'm human. Yes. Do you still believe this? I certainly do. You are simply mistaken. You believe yourself to be a beast because of what the villagers said. Why did they call me a beast? If... If I were able to see, I could surely answer all of your questions. But I cannot. So all I can offer you is my conjecture. Come on, tell me. I suspect that you do not come from this country. No, you do not come from this continent. You came to this continent from far, far away. Perhaps even across the seas. This land has been cast into turmoil by the war. Fortunately, no fighting reached the village, but... It has blocked trade routes, stripped them of their independence, and cast a dark shadow over their hope. They are quite devastated, I imagine. And then, you showed up. From what I have heard, this area is not particularly friendly to people from other countries. Even less so to those from another continent. I doubt they know much about distant lands, so they have probably never seen someone like you before. But in addition, you would have been wearied and worn. I guess you were emaciated, wasting away. Enough so that you did not even look like yourself. Do you remember how you arrived at the village? When I woke up, I was on the beach. I don't remember anything before that. My joints all ached, and I was incredibly thirsty. I was in so much pain. I sought help. But nothing I said got through to the villagers. I did not understand what they said either. One thing you did understand was that they were calling you Bestia. Right. And I also understood that word was used to describe beasts. The way they looked at me wasn't normal, so I... I imagine at first they simply didn't want the trouble. They didn't actually think you were a beast. Simply that this wretched man, unfamiliar in appearance, who had washed ashore resembled a beast. Washed ashore? In the sea. I, I do not remember. I can't remember. No, I mustn't remember. If I'm not a beast, that means the other beast wasn't one either. What did the beast look like? It looked somehow similar to me. Its hair color, skin color, eye color. And the way it spoke seemed vaguely familiar. Which means it was. 
was. It was. I cannot accept that. If I do, then that means I have done something terrible. No. What? They did call me a beast. I was, in fact, a beast. As I've been saying, that's because. Tell me I'm a beast, please. Let me remain a beast. How do you imagine he saw the world? I cannot even begin to fathom. But you can never know what someone else sees. And there is nothing to say that they see the same thing as you. As you and I have seen different things, so too did the man and his lover see different things. Or perchance, the true shape of the world is visible only through the white-haired girl's sightless eyes. Do you think the reason he so stubbornly rejected his human memories is because he had taken the life of his beloved? And I personally believe that there was more to it than that. Someday you shall remember. You shall remember everything. I will not allow you to avert your eyes. Remember that you have always, always been a beast, incapable of saving anyone, only of taking, remember, and suffer, agonize, writhe, anguish, grieve, suffer. Such a damn shame. Our homeland is but a stone's throw away, and they still won't let us in. Just how long are they going to maintain this stance? Regrettable as it is, some. Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly, Captain Osama. We can make it far on this white man's ship, but they give no response to our missiles. I'm not sure it's even reaching the magistrate's hands. Is it so difficult to be even the slightest bit accommodating to your fellow countrymen? They seem to be treating the white man rather poorly as well. I hear they imprison them on a tiny man-made island. That's no way to make friends. Well, all things considered, we can hardly call this our own land anymore anyway. For how many generations has your family lived overseas again? I am the third. I see. But then I doubt that you have any attachment to this land. That's not true. I may never have the opportunity to suffer in our soil, but my spirit dwells within this land. My grandparents have told me much about this country. Of her four rich, vibrant seasons and boundless beauty. I'm deeply grateful that you invited me on this voyage to visit her Captain Osama. I find I finally have finally at a distance laid eyes upon my own. I cannot say when this era may draw to a close. But I hope the time comes when we can proudly proclaim our own motherland. You can't find food this good man home. I eagerly await the day when it comes true. Indeed, as do I. I have lied to her. She believes I was born in the Orient. But truth, I have never once set foot in that country. I was born in Europe. My family has not been permitted to return since my grandparents left. I still remember as clear as day. The look of profound regret on my grandfather's face as he departed from this world. He bequeathed unto me a katana, and on that day, the plague became the one object by me to my own world. I could not bring myself to tell her that I had disallowed to return home. I did not want her to think that I had been forsaken by the country, that my country would do such a thing. Some part of me believes that there was more to it than that. A smuggler. Yeah, I never would have expected it. Not on this ship. One of the crew was conspiring with the government official. He hid unreported goods on board and delivered them in secret. What goods? Silver coins. Spanish coins. Trade for more than the worthless currency. The official was sentenced to commit support. Responsible for our own crew's punishment. I'm trying to decide how to handle it. Real quick, if you're not familiar with what Sapupu is, that is 
also known as Har Harakiri, I believe it's called. It's the Japanese Ritualistic Suicide. Basically, they will take a sword of some sort, they will impale themselves through the stomach, and they are actually supposed to completely split open their stomach from top to bottom. And then, at which point, they're supposed to lean forward, and the second, or the witness, whoever you want to call the person, is going to be standing over them with another sword and will decapitate them. So, yes, very gruesome. And if you didn't know that, now you know how it works. Just don't try that at home, folks. Have him commit some poop as well. The sailor has brought shame upon the entire ship. If he is made to take responsibility for his actions, then perhaps we can minimize the damage to our reputation. You make a fair point. Unfortunately, he is not of this land. I doubt he is familiar with the ritual. I shall serve as a second to ensure he dies without issue. Have you lost your mind? I have been trained in the art. It is unlikely I should fail. You are not a samurai, though. I was born into a family of samurai. At least it was until three generations ago. But that blood still courses through my veins. Very well, then. That is how we shall do it. the ritual of Sipuru of our fellow crewman Seedorf. Seedorf has, in violation of restrictions set in place by the Shogunate, committed the grave crime of smuggling prohibited goods into the country. In order to atone for this betrayal of the trust of both nations, he vows to take his life here before you. Do you have any last words? I deeply regret that we should have to lose a companion with whom we have traveled the seven seas in this manner. Was that dream? Was that was that from my memories? No. Asuma, I've never met that man. Nor that woman. No, no, no. I was I was just no. It wasn't me. I, I don't. I I I don't. Don't remember. I don't remember anything. Not a thing. Not a single thing. I am a beast. I'm a beast, not a human. I don't need those memories. Designated value as currency. 
So again, it's not for want of money. Well, damn. It seems Seedorf might have been innocent after all. Perhaps so. And if he had no hand in the smuggling, then I might have done a horrible, regrettable thing. Horribly regrettable thing. Now, as you said, an investigation was conducted. We had no choice but to believe the information we were given. You mustn't blame yourself. I feel bad for putting such an unpleasant responsibility on you. Not at all. Now, how do we handle this? I can't believe a silver coin was found in someone else's luggage. It's going to be useless if you don't start talking soon. What do you want me to tell you? I swear, I had nothing to do with it. What has you so stubbornly refusing to talk? 
Is your supplier really worth going to such lengths to protect? No, I can't tell you what I don't know. That's... All that's left is your thumb. Help someone get me. Just so we're perfectly clear, everyone on board knows what you did. No one's going to come to a smuggler's aid. God, I can't take any more of this. Please stop. Ready to talk. the opportunity to use my katana. I tossed the man's body overboard. My story would be that he sneaked out when I wasn't looking. I threw 
himself into the sea. As I watch the sack of flesh sink into the depths, I'm thoroughly shocked to realize I don't feel the slightest bit bad about what I've done. No regret, no remorse, nothing. I comprehend that the things I've done are reprehensible, that they're evil. But that knowledge wasn't sufficient to restrain my urges. There's an itch I felt deep within my chest ever since that moment my blade sunk its teeth in his ear's neck. His psyche drifted erratically between human and beast. If he accepted himself as human, it might cause memories better left buried to return to him. If he accepted himself as a beast, in exchange for his memories, he would no longer be able to rejoin human society. The white-haired girl fervently supported him in this precarious times. I was quite amazed. I had never imagined she would grow to be such a strong woman. Nevertheless, God is a cruel master. For what strength he gave her spiritually, he took an equal part from her physically. 
though she persisted day in and day out to stay by the man's side. One day, she suddenly fell ill. With her in the, high thro with her in the throes of a high fever, and not knowing the cause, he fell into a perpetual panic. There was no medicine in the mansion. They could hardly manage to put together sufficiently nutritious meals. Though there was no medicine, maybe there was something else that could make her feel better. However, everything he could think of required him to leave the house. Hey, hey. Is there anything you would like? Anything I would like? I'm considering... visiting the village. I see. You're going to the village. I thought I might be able to get some medicine. I would prefer to bring a doctor here, but no one would come if they learned you were in this mansion. So... He was playing a bond disguise to enter the village as a person. The white-haired girl smiled when she heard his idea. She had, after all, always wanted him to think of himself as human. However, because she was so pure-hearted, she did not comprehend the full extent of the slaughter he had confessed to committing, the revenge he had taken on those who had chased him around, how sinister his cackling and furious his weeping. She did not grasp just how serious it was. She had faith that Bestia had kindness in his heart. If you cannot get any medication, then buy me some oranges, please. Oranges. This is a land blessed by the sun. You should be able to find some wonderful fresh oranges. Will that make you feel better? Yes, it should. Okay. Bestia's mind was made up. He would don the skin of a human for her to protect the peace he had. He would return to the place that had left him with many painful memories to him the source of his fear. Whenever he let his guard down, their shouts would play back in his mind. <laughs> bestia. Bestia, bestia. Hideous beast. Though he had physically conquered the people who lived there, Bestia's memories of the village still haunted him. But her health meant more to him than any of that. He was willing to cast aside his fear if it meant the white-haired girl would recover. The girl still in her bed, he made his way out of the mansion. the overgrown forest, pushing forward one step at a time, all the while trying to brush aside his apprehension, until he arrived at the village. This is where they called me a beast, where I almost killed, and where I killed them. I look different than I did then. I'm dressed differently too, but can I play the part? Can I act convincing enough human? I have no choice. There are no other villages. I can't let her die. Excuse me, could you answer a question for me? A village man is looking at me. Only for a moment. But for me, that moment is torturously long. A faint look of panic crosses his face, perhaps in fear of my appearance. He's staring at me. Will he point his finger and call me a beast? Will the other villagers come and kill me? seen you around here before. He didn't recognize me. Yes, I come from a faraway land and I'm unfamiliar with this area, so... You're dressed like a nobleman. On a secret trip or something. Something like that. You look really pale, though. Searching for a doctor. Yes, but not for me. My companion has come down with a fever. Sorry to hear it. Well, I'd love to introduce you, but he's out right now. And he won't be back for a few days. See. And where might I be able to buy fruit? There's a shop just round that corner. Thank you very much. Don't mention it. Do take care, Traveler. It's dangerous out there. So they weren't friendly to Pauline, but they are friendly to him. I'm starting to attract attention, but not the same kind as before. They don't look at me with revulsion, hatred, or furious indignation. They're simply curious. Feels different than last time. Could have changed this drastically. Or is it because I really did look like a beast then? And now I look like a human? I don't know. Excuse me. Me? Yes? I would like to buy 
get some fruit. Some oranges. Oranges, alrighty, just a sec. The fruit vendor doesn't recognize me as the beast either. Any other year and they'd be a lot plumper than this. But this year, we've had the end of the war and this whole mess with the beast and it's just been crazy. If you'd like, how about you come back in a few years and try our oranges again? They'll be several times better, I assure you. I'll keep that in mind. You bet, that'll be... I'm sorry, I don't have any local currency. Would this suffice? What? How? Is... No good, I take it? No, 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 on the contrary. It's hardly fair for you trading a jewel for a few oranges. That's all I have to offer. I hope you can exchange it for money. Sure. You nobles are something else. No. Aren't you? Though if you wander around dressed too well, you put yourself in danger. You might find yourself stripped bare by a bandit, or perhaps even catch the attention of the beast. The beast. Everyone mentions the beast. They speak of me. Have you heard the tales? I have not. There's a beast den not too far from this village. It's attacked before we've been living in fear, never knowing when it might attack again. But that all ends today. The men have finally found their spines. They all got together and went out to exterminate it. What? And you'll never guess who's responsible. A kid! A little boy is spearheading the attack! Never would have expected a little kid to whip all our lazy, cowardly men into shape. The boy's the only one who knows where the beast stand. Ah, hold on. What about your oranges? The men have banded together? And they're going to kill the beast? Why now? Why when I'm not there? I'm the beast. I'm right here. I'm the one you're trying to hunt. The only person at the mansion right now is her. asking the fruit vendor how long ago the party set off. No one could with that knowledge have done it. He had to hurry back regardless. The sun was beating the scent, draping the surroundings in a deep blackness. As if to keep him from returning home, the knight wrapped its hands around his head, covering him both eyes. In what direction did he have to head to return to the mansion? He stood through the forest and eventually the mansion appeared. Chamber. Hey. Hey, hello. Where are you? Where are you? Answer me. The man swung his head back and forth so hard he thought he might break his own neck. When he made to look down, he slipped, falling on his tailbone. He felt something slick on his hands, a sensation he could recognize anywhere. Of 
Excellent skin was no longer even seen. It was now the bloodless color of dirt. She was sprawled haphazardly out on the cellar floor, dried blood stains around her half open mouth. And those lips, naturally lacking their former rose machine, the body was covered with an array of wounds. The most prominent was the man's super sword standing upon her chest. This is the bestia? He doesn't look the same. It's him. He's the same guy. He's the bestia. Several villagers surrounding him at the best of a young boy. He's got himself dressed up all proper and fancy, but the clothes don't make him a good man. Isn't that my bestia? No. were similarly dumbstruck. Not even I could understand his behavior. What the... What the hell is wrong with you? How can you laugh at this? I don't get it. How? How indeed I wonder myself. I don't know either. You know what? It doesn't matter anymore. Because every last one of my anchors has broken off and sunk into the sea.
and unfortunately we don't know who the last man standing was. But, gonna end this chapter right here.